Dear conference audience in Switzerland and elsewhere, I really should have liked uh, this little paper to be given in Solothurn, being present there, since Switzerland is my number one summer destination. I've been hiking in the Oberengadin Valley almost every year for more than 20 summers now in the beautiful mountains surrounding Sils Maria and Maloya. But these are very special times, so thank you for the opportunity to talk to you this way. And I'm sorry that I didn't have the time to translate my talk to German. My own uh, relevant background in this context is the following. I worked as a university press, magazine and uh, newspaper editor for many years. For a decade I served as the cultural and op-ed editor of Aftenposten, the leading Norwegian liberal daily paper. Uh, then I served as uh, the deputy minister for culture and media in the present Norwegian government for the conservatives before deciding to join the Fit Wood Foundation, the Freedom of Expression Foundation, as its uh, executive director six years ago. Fit Wood is a private foundation funding projects within the arts, culture, journalism, documentary films and photo on a broad basis with 1,200 grants every year, an endowment of uh, 350 million euros and an annual spending of about 15 million euros. This year it will be 20 million euros due to the corona crisis. So we are not a huge foundation in the European or American scale, but I think it's fair to say that we are, we are important in Norway. Uh, we took uh, the initiative to establish uh, houses of literature and public debate in Norway some years ago, and we have in some periods also had media ownership. We are committed to spending most of our funds in Norway, uh, perhaps around 85%. Internationally, we have a somewhat narrower funding profile concentrating on core freedom of expression issues and journalism. We support organizations and projects on a one-year term at a time, and mainly in Europe, the Mideast and North America. Article 19, the Reuters Institute for the Study of Journalism in Oxford, Index on Censorship, IFEX and American PEN are just a few of our funding objects. Uh, journalism and freedom of expression project in Eastern Europe is a high priority and together with the German Zeitstiftung we every year give out our free media awards. We also started a journalism program Perspektivi in Russia in 2015 which is still running together with the Robert Bosch Stiftung and the Thomson Reuters Foundation. We are furthermore part of a European program with 15 other foundations called Civitatis, established a few years ago to support civil society organizations and journalism uh, in Central Europe. After the governments of Poland and Hungary started systematically attacking civil society organizations, we also own a house in London called the Free Word Centre, which houses several organisations within culture and freedom of expression work. I think I would like to strike a slightly more positive note uh, than what is perhaps the general mood of this conference and the description of the present situation when it comes to cultural journalism. Cultural journalism is uh, not dead in uh, Norway at least, and if it is weaker than we would like it to, it is partly its own fault. It has been too conservative in many respects. Today it's strengthening itself again, I think, because it has managed to become more enlightening, accessible and relevant to its readers, listeners and viewers. But Norway might be a happy exception for what is happening in other countries. I, I simply don't know. Norway is a country where first-class journalism is again blossoming, and best of all, it has a huge readership. Uh, the reason for this might be that Norway is an especially interesting example of funding of journalism, in particular general government funding. 
Uh, Frito is one of the few private foundations in Norway funding journalism and I'll um, tell you shortly about our experiences. Of course, uh, there have been problems with cultural journalism in Norway during the last years. But I wouldn't call it a crisis. In terms of pure volume and quantity, the amount of cultural journalism has indeed uh, been reduced during the last few years. There is generally less cultural journalism quantitatively. But exactly the same is the case with all other fields of journalism as a consequence of reductions in staff. Uh, so this is not a tendency that has struck cultural journalism only. And I would like to add, this uh, is not in itself a negative fact. We need stricter priorities in a media situation like the one we have today. Too much uh, pretty uninteresting cultural journalism with far too few readers has been created so far. We simply didn't need it all. Nothing has value if it, is, if it doesn't reach an audience. And too much of cultural journalism has been pretty unimportant to almost all. So cultural journalism in Norway has been also too conservative. It has spoken mostly to those who are already interested and even they have had to struggle with an enormous flow of single stories and reviews on single books, performances, etc., etc. And this has been felt very much in uh, Norway where public spendings for arts and culture doubled during the period from 2005 to 2013 due to political priorities. Cultural journalism did its best, but simply couldn't keep up with reporting on everything. It, <laughs> it tried and failed. For sure, uh, reporting on and reviewing of a great number of single publications and events like books, art exhibitions, book uh, films, is still a very valuable part of cultural journalism in Norway today. But as the output and production has increased so much during the expansion of Norwegian cultural life the last decade, a relatively smaller amount of the total can get any media attention, whether a reportage or a review. This is not a happy situation for the cultural scene and for the creative artists, of course, and it could be seen as an unfortunate situation that so much of everything that gets public or private funding does not get filtered through the quality filters of journalism. But that simply is impossible. Therefore, as a parallel to the new strict priorities of cultural journalism, additional attention on social media, blogs and in new niche media has become much more important and not least the marketing efforts of the publishers, dance companies and theatres themselves. This has been a necessary new tendency. And a natural and perhaps necessary development. Because cultural journalism doesn't first and foremost um, have obligations and duties towards artists and cultural institutions themselves, I think this is only a pure side effect uh, if these institutions and persons themselves get anything out of cultural journalism. It's a pure side effect. Journalism should serve the public interest only. It should serve society and not be peer agents for arts and culture. It should be critical and questioning. Arts and culture simply has to do its own PR work towards it, uh, its audiences. But uh, for sure, telling audiences about new products and events is still central to cultural journalism, but it is somewhat less important than before. And that's good, because cultural journalism has for too long presented a very fragmented portrait of culture and arts. It has not been very useful in helping citizens to understand our present time. And 
at the same time, it has been very slow in adjusting itself to digital publishing. But today, and during the last few years, I observe some new positive trends in cultural journalism in Norway, and these should be strengthened. Several newspapers and broadcasters have developed ambitions to the effect that cultural journalism should not primarily report on single publications and single events, but, but instead try to grasp the important trends and uh, tendencies in our time. Questions about the values underlying culture and society, combining perspectives from culture and ideology, politics, and seeing, interpreting and understanding aesthetics in the perspective of societal questions not seeing aesthetics just in isolation, but in a society context. This has made cultural journalism's uh, potential in the public space more visible. It has simply become more relevant. And this is why cultural journalism is so important, and this is why Fritz Ord wants to fund it. Cultural journalism could be some of the best journalism about society, observed through aesthetical phenomena, ideally several expressions at the same time, and telling us interesting things about values, identity, ideas and language. At the same time, um, happily, during the last five years, several newspapers have been successful in getting many more readers to pay for cultural journalism, as it has innovated in the digital space, and, and not writing anymore primarily for print. In this respect, it of course helps that the willingness to pay for news and reporting is higher, considerably higher in Norway than in most other countries, as the Reuters Digital News Report tells us every year. And the will to pay is especially high when it comes to journalism that is solid and brings forward knowledge, whether in reports or in comments and analysis. Journalism has been important to the Fritz Wood Foundation ever since our inception in 1974, and today more than ever. A few years ago we launched a program for the years 2018 to 21, spending 100 million Norwegian kroner for Norwegian journalism and uh, also substantial additional funding for journalism in the form of documentary films, non-fiction books and journalism funding internationally. Altogether this will be um, some uh, 180 million Norwegian kroner spent over four years or approximately 20 million euros. And uh, admittedly, this is just a small addition to the huge government funding in this country. But uh, it, is, uh, it is a bit important, as it takes the form of direct funding of projects. Just let me add a few words about this privileged market, Norway, and our media diversity. This small country of 5.3 million uh, citizens enjoy around 230 newspapers lots of local, regional and national commercial radio stations, and also a commercial broadcaster with some public funding, and not least, one of the world's best public broadcasting stations, the NRK, with several TV and radio channels. Norwegian politics has been quite unified in its ambitions to co-fund Norwegian media since the 1960s with uh, general tax exemptions for journalism, with generous funding for the public broadcaster, and also special support for niche papers and smaller publications. Altogether, included the NRK, this amounts to perhaps 8 billion Norwegian kroner a year, or approximately 900 million euros a year. This is a unique and privileged uh, situation, and it has mostly given good results, high quality journalism and a very diversified media landscape. 
Norwegian media also do very good in their digi digitalization efforts. So funding in this scale has not blocked innovation. And not uh, one single medium apart then from the national public broadcaster is dependent when it comes to its survival on um, public funding. No one is totally dependent on it. They are all primarily dependent on their commercial markets, which are huge in Norway, but of course in extremely tough competition with Facebook and Google, who have uh, stolen most of the advertising incomes during the last years. A few years ago, by the way, I uh, chaired a government commission writing a white paper on the future of Norwegian media funding recommending more funding of local journalism and less funding of the biggest receivers of uh, support from the government. This is now being followed up uh, also in a much slower pace than we uh, recommended. Uh, all of this public and government funding is not given directly to specific projects and this is where the Fit Wood Foundation comes in with our funding priorities. Unfortunately, there are almost no other such funding sources for journalism in Norway. Uh, we do not fund ordinary running costs, administration, but we give grants based on applications with, sit with six deadlines every year to projects with a time limit. We uh, fund projects coming from newspapers, weekly papers and uh, cultural journals. We, we, we do not restrict our funding to any specific area since we do not want to influence directly or indirectly journalists and editors' own priorities. We, as a foundation, exist to make their ambitions and goals easier to reach, not least by co-funding resource-demanding projects that need some extra funding from external sources. Our only set of criteria, in fact, is that the journalism we fund should be some way relevant to our society and to public debate. Within uh, cultural journalism, we give priority to criticism and reviews, and we give out 10 substantial scholarships every year, in addition to smaller sums to specific projects. We do not uh, receive a very high number of uh, applications from other cultural journalism, but we surely give priority to all sorts of investigative journalism in the field. For example, on the use of public money, which is huge in this field in our country. And we are also especially interested in cultural journalism focusing on value and identity questions. The biggest newspapers are seldom the most eager when it comes to applying to us for funding, but uh, the more niche papers, cultural magazines and uh, regional papers are often applicants. We have also seen good cooperations between several local newspapers when it comes to public spendings to culture. And podcasts are also a valuable and fast-growing way of publishing in, in the cultural journalism area. But one sad experience is that we have to spend quite a lot of energy uh, on guiding the applicants in the process. Journalists and editors simply are not very good at writing project applications, even though we are an unbureaucratic foundation. So we appreciate short applications, five to six pages altogether, but uh, a, a bit more than half a page, which we often get. I think this is uh, the result that so many journalists and editors are not at all used to apply for external funding, with the exception then of freelancers, which are very important to us. And a small number of media don't at all want to apply to us, especially not for core journalism, to just to keep their full independence from any external sources, even us as a philanthropic foundation working only for the common good. That's uh, understandable and we, of course, respect it. 
By the way, we never, almost never, fund more than half of a single project's total budget. The papers or media themselves should dedicate the rest of the resources, at least, least half of the budget. To, to sum up, in all of these ways, the Free Tool Foundation co-funds around 200 journalism projects every year with grants ranging from 20,000 kroner to 2 million Norwegian kroner. From essays in uh, small cultural journals to, to us being one of the main funders of a new and very good center for investigative journalism in the city of Bergen. One out of ten of our journalism grants are to cultural journalism, I think, I would say but we are working consciously to increase that number. We are uh, very aware at the Free Tool Foundation that we, we are not editors. We do not want in any way to interfere in the profile of projects, but restrict ourselves to getting enough information in so that we get to know about the possible results and the value that will in the end be published. And uh, we would like to check that the persons involved are indeed able to finish a project as intended. So editorial independence is, is holy to us. And my impression is that this is also well understood in the media we serve, that we do not want to interfere. Criticism towards our funding is pretty rare, and when it comes, it's not from someone claiming that we have broken their editorial independence. It more often comes from someone who disagrees politically with the goals of our funding objects or think that something we have funded is ideologically motivated. Our funding of the leading Norwegian fact-checking service, which is also funded by several big media outlets, has been criticized by populists for just strengthening mainstream media by criticizing alternative media. But uh, the fact is that uh, this service fact check all types of media. Mm, it might also be a bit frustrating when we as a private philanthropic foundation is compared to sponsors. We are not a sponsor. We do not want anything back. We exist simply to serve the public sphere. Most people understand and respect this, and no one compares our efforts to content marketing. But Norway is, a society, very dependent on public government funding, also for the press. So now and then uh, one could get the impression that some <laughs> editors would uh, love a situation where there is only the state on one side and the market on the other side. State funding is uh, really seen as totally clean and independent in Norway, and this might come as a surprise uh, internationally. But again, other voices would also like there to be a bigger number of foundations funding journalism in Norway, and so would we at Fritold. To conclude, then, my main conclusion is that our funding is really seen as positive and independent. We are proud to fund journalism because it serves our society's ability to be self-critical and reflective. And the new revitalized digital cultural journalism makes it even more relevant to its audiences and their attempts to understand what is happening in a complex society, and why it is taking place. All the trends and tendencies, some of the values and identities in play. And that's why both private and government funding of cultural journalism is more important than ever before. Thank you. <laughs>